Hello, welcome to today's Monday Manna. As always, we pray that we find you in good health and in good spirits. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you're doing. We thank you for um, life, health, and strength today. We thank you for the ability to think right to have a sound mind and sound judgment. So we thank you for peace, peace and safety wherever we go. We thank you for your word and your spirit that you have sent to give us life and that more abundantly. We bless you today in Jesus name. Amen, 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 and amen. Again, welcome to today's Monday Manna. I am your host, Annette Hutchinson, and it is my pleasure and my honor to serve you in this capacity. We're going to continue our series today on how to prosper without a penny. I pray that there are many of you who are loving this series. I pray that there are many of you who are gleaning from this series. And I pray that there are many of you who are being encouraged to say, hey, I can prosper in my walk with God. Amen. Now, if you go back to the introduction um, video and 1A and 1B, uh, we talked about several things that I won't cover in this video because we're going to keep moving forward. Uh, but we do discuss uh, John, 3 John, verse 2. We do discuss, I believe, uh, Joshua 1 and 8 um, and Jeremiah 29, 11. And so what we're doing is we are dismantling the scriptures that have been used to encourage us as believers to apply them and yet trust God for a financial gain in return. When in fact, most of the scriptures that talk about prosperity or prospering have nothing to do at all with money. It has to do with so much more. I know that we look at money and we say, man, if I just hit the lottery, if I just had a huge bank account, if I just, you know, if I just had a six figure income, well, I'm telling you with prosperity, the way God laid it out in the scriptures, those things can come, but that's not the ultimate. The ultimate is to prosper in the things of God to prosper according to the word of God. And while we are prospering, those other things will be added as God sees fit. Amen. I'm saying it's available to you just like it's available to anybody else that you consider rich and wealthy. It can be available to you, but we have to put things in proper perspective and priority. So we're talking about how to prosper without a penny. I'm going to go to Psalm 1. I'm looking in the New Living Translation. It's actually a paraphrase, but I'm looking in the New Living Translation as it is called. Uh, verse 1, it says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. Now we know that there are some people who have gained wealth in a ungodly fashion. We know that there are those who have gained wealth by doing wicked things, by following wicked advice. And so we don't want to be in that number. We don't want to be in that number. We want to be in the number where whatever it is that, that we are able to obtain for our lives and for our benefit and for the benefit of our loved ones, that it comes in a godly fashion. I know you agree with me about that. Verse two says, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. Who do? The ones that don't follow advice of the wicked, the ones that don't stand around, oh, I forgot to read the rest of it. <laughs> Let me start over. All the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. 
In other words, you, you've chosen a wrong crowd to hang around. And yes, they may be gaining some things because of the choices that they're making, but the end thereof is not going to be good. So we, we want to make sure y'all can see I am fighting with these braces today. We want to make sure that we are putting ourselves in a place and a position for God to bless us with whatever he has for us. Amen. The scripture says, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like they, meaning they, who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. They delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all that they do. Bearing fruit in each season. Let me ask you, how many of you, how many of us want to bear fruit in each season? How many of us, like the orange tree, want to bear fruit every time it's season for oranges to come? How many of us, like apple trees, want to be in the place where we are bearing fruit every time that season comes around? This is what the scriptures have in store for us. We are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season, each season, each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. What I want you to notice, aside from bearing fruit in each season, is that this scripture has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with money. I'm going to look it up in my Bible concordance here on my phone. Psalm 1, verse 3. This word here in the Hebrew Bible, it means to push forward. To me, that is so exciting. It means to push forward. It means to keep moving forward. That's what this actually means. It means that they'll prosper in all that they do. What tells what that tells us is that in this bearing fruit season, there there is some the tree has to push. The tree the tree has to stay planted. It has to stay rooted. It has to even though the storms come, you know you've seen some of the newscasts where horrible storms have come and those palm trees i mean they sway from side to side and most often they're not uprooted most often they stay rooted and strong regardless of the winds that are blowing them fruit trees bear fruit every season they don't bear fruit in the, orange trees don't bear fruit in the winter, if I'm not mistaken. Neither do apple trees, but they do bear fruit in their right season. And that's what meditating on the law of the Lord, this whole series, How to Prosper Without a Penny, you will see the theme of this whole series is meditating on the word of God, meditating on the law of the Lord, hearing what did God say and applying what he said to you to do. And he is the one who will determine the season of bearing, of bearing fruit. But we have been given a promise that we can prosper in everything that we do. We can prosper in everything that we do just by making sure, number one, that we're hanging around with the right folks. The Bible says bad company corrupts good morals. Amen. So we need to be real discreet about who we are actually spending that time with. You know, there is a there's a uh, saying that you become like the five people that you hang around the most. 
you become, if this is true, who do you hang around the most? Who are the five people that you hang around the most? Yeah, we'll just think about that for a minute. That's what they say. You become like the five people that you hang around the most. And so we want to make sure that the ones that we're hanging around with the most are actually going to be depositing into us those things that are going to be the most beneficial and advantageous for us, not at somebody else's expense, but for the for us to bear fruit in our lives. That is beneficial to us and also pleasing to God. So it says that they will prosper in all that they do. They will prosper in all that they do. That is the New Living Translation. I'm going to read this out of the English Standard Version. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. See, that is the key. That's the key right there. Meditating on the law of the Lord day and night. Now, does that mean that you have to sit at your desk or at your chair or at your table 24-7? 365, 366 on a leap year, reading the Bible. 24 7. No, that's not practical. And God, believe it or not, is a very practical God. He would not have us do that because there's other things that we need to involve ourselves in our lives to be productive. And so we know that that's, that's not what he's talking about. But what he is talking about is making room for the word of God. You setting aside specific time to make room for the word of God, whether that's in the morning for you, whether that's in the afternoon or whether that's um, in the evening, setting aside that time. Um, to meditate on the word of God, to read the word of God and let the word of God speak to us will help us to not walk in the counsel of the wicked. It will help us not stand in the way of sinners and it will help us not to sit in the seat of scoffers. Amen. And so as we delight in the law of the Lord, we become like a tree planted by the streams of water. So what it goes on to say that yields its fruit in its season. How many of you want to yield fruit in your season? You know, I've tasted fruit that was out of season and it just, it number one, it didn't really look as vivacious as I thought that it should. And it didn't taste as delightful as I thought it should. Have you ever wanted to bite into a, an orange? Um, I really enjoy oranges but wanted to bite into an orange and so i you know i go to the store we've got some grocery stores around here go to the store grab a bag of oranges you know you kind of want to make sure you inspect them before you bring them home and you're thinking i got a good bag and so then when you get home and you cut that puppy open you cut the orange open amen and first of all you know it just it doesn't look like that orange that you were expecting, <laughs> you know? And so you say, okay, okay, okay. Maybe it'll taste okay anyway. And so then you begin to taste it and it just doesn't taste good. It, it doesn't taste good at all. You, you don't even want to go through the rest of the bag of oranges because you consider, well, if this one's not any good, then the rest of them probably are not any good either. I've thrown whole bags of oranges away considering that all of them were like this one. But fruit in its season, there's nothing like an orange in its season. There's nothing like a peach in its season. Those of you from Georgia, I know you know what I'm talking about. There's nothing like a peach in its season. For those of you from Washington State and Oregon, there's nothing like an apple in its season. There's nothing like fruit in its season. And so part of Bearing fruit in season is requiring that we meditate on the word of God day and night, 
let it keep going around and around and around in your head keep thinking about it keep speaking it kind of under your breath and just going over it kind of chewing it like a cow chews her cud over and over getting all the vitamins and nutrients and minerals out of it and then um then the bible says you're like a tree planted by streams of water so that means then we have to purposely stay rooted in the things of god colossians chapter 2 verses 6 and 7 talk about staying rooted in christ staying rooted in the things of god regardless of the storms that are going on around us stay rooted in the things of God and then the promise is in all that he does he prospers this word prospers has nothing to do with money it has nothing to do with wealth it has everything to do with moving forward it has everything to do with pushing forward in spite of the obstacles it has everything to do with you keep going forward in spite of those those even those things on the inside in your gut that you know you feel like you got sucker punched and you're like oh i don't want to do this oh this is too hard or oh i'm scared or you know uh, i don't know if, if i can no you can you can the promise is that whatever you do will prosper when we meditate on the word of god and we stay rooted in the things of god we will prosper we will push through we will push through we will break through to the other side when we meditate on the word of god we can do this we can do this we can do this and i started out by saying there sometimes there's those that say you know what i don't even want to hear about this and then there are those that say then there are those that say um i tried it and it didn't work for me and then there are those that say yes i'm in it i'm in it to win it <laughs> i'm in it for the long haul amen and so whatever category that you stand in the bottom line is at the end of it all you're still going to need to push through you're going to have opportunities whether you're a believer or whether you're not a believer you're going to have opportunities that come your way where you're going to have to push through and you're going to need a source that is reliable dependable and trustworthy and believe me that source is god himself it's coming you may not have come across that opportunity yet but i promise you it is coming it is coming and so as we take the time to submit ourselves to the word of god as we take the time to get to know him he already knows all about us to get to know him amen to give ourselves over to him completely and trust that he knows what's best for us he will help us to prosper he'll help us push through he'll help us break through to the other side of whatever it is that we are challenged with today amen i pray that something was said to encourage your heart your hope your faith your trust and confidence in god and in god alone the next time you eat a piece of fruit remember fruit that's in its season is the sweetest may god richly bless you while you prosper according to his word amen